So, I just wanted to give a bit of a quick update about what it's like living in South Korea. I've been here now, I'm looking at my watch because there's a date on there. I've been in Korea now for two and a half months and it's gone like that. And th there's been some challenges. Um, the first challenge is obviously the culture shock. Things are so different here compared to the UK. You may think your life's easier in the UK, but there's so many different things that may be different. Like, for example, in Manchester, if I wanted to get into the city centre, it would take me about 40 minutes, 50 minutes maybe, to get a bus. But here, you can get a bus, you can get a subway, you can get a cheap taxi. And it, even the chat taxi, like, they're ridiculously cheap. Like, the other night I got a trip back from a place called Hongdae to Sangmoon where I live and it's basically a distance from one side of Manchester to the other. And I doesn't mean like South Manchester to North, Urmson to Denton. And it cost me 30,000k and I kicked off. I was raging with myself, 30,000k. But when you translate it, it was about 20 pounds. It was about, a f I wouldn't say third, but it was about half the price it would be in Manchester. And um, it's just, as well, the subways, the only problem I have with the subways in Korea is they, they close like half 11. They, they close at 12 midweek, but half 11 on the weekends. They shut earlier on the weekends, which I, I don't get. I just do not understand. But when they are up and running, they're a hell of a lot better than the ones in Manchester. And um, the Korean people as well is something I'm really, really impressed by. This camera which I'm recording off. First time I took it out of the apartment in two months and a half months since I got here. I taken it to a palace. Uh, I took it to Jongbok Palace. And I was taking my pictures and then I went to uh, Gongak. Jongak. God, I can't pronounce that different. Jongak. To. Um, we had an international exchange with Japanese, Korean, American, Canadian, English. And it was really fun. And we had a few beers in the bar. And I got home and I went to work the next day. And about my third lesson in, I thought. Did I take my camera home last night? And I didn't. I forgot my camera, I left my camera out. So I was devastated because it's not the most expensive camera in the world, but you know, it cost me a few quid. And um, the next thing you know, I'm like, God, I don't even know what bar I was in. So I spoke to my Korean friend and she, we met up and um, we found it just like that in the bar, waiting for us. And she said that the guy said, oh, we saw you leave it, well, obviously, after I left and he felt so sorry so he left it up there in case he someone walked by and found it. I had to go through the pictures obviously to find it was me and confirm this is this, this is this, but the, the trust in Manchester that, that would have been gone. That would have been gone. But the, the career every day seems to just amaze me. And at the minute, I know a lot of the UK media, they, they are really, really hammering home that South Korea is in great threat. Oh, the North Koreans are really going to, like, cause us jeopardy. Well, I feel safe. I, I feel safe. I say that as a moped goes by and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> but I feel safe. And um, it makes me laugh because I'm looking on Facebook and, like, is people, every time I log onto Facebook, there's a new article or situational story about North Korea and about the threat they are to this planet, and well, not this planet, to South Korea even. And it, it worries you a little bit, but I feel safe in South Korea, and I feel like the right possible things will be done. I think you're very easy to come under the umbrella, especially when it's been a slow month with news um, over the summer. I mean, I don't know, I don't really have a comment on it. The, the, the news love going on about this North Korean threat, but I don't know. The, the, the one problem I would say is nothing's come out of the British Embassy about it. Nothing has come out of the British Embassy about it. Part of the American Embassy has explained that nothing's changed, nothing's 
going about, but apparently the British Embassy have just said nothing. Which is not really the best idea. I might contact the Irish Embassy to see what they have to say about things, but there's only 8,000 Brits living in Seoul. So about, I imagine there's possibly a little bit less Irish living here as well. <laughs> I end up bleeding one and leaves in Kitty with his bird, so. I don't know, what, what should we do? So, I'm going to stop this video now. I've rambled on. Probably doesn't make sense when I walk, look back on it, but um, yeah, just an update on what it is. But before I go as well, I've got myself a new sofa. So, make myself a nice new sofa. So, the, uh, the sanguine department starts to take shape. So, yeah. If I zoom in, will I zoom in? There we go. 